All right, what is up YouTube, HPJ here, and I am coming with you guys today because we're going to be rocking out with the Fortune Ladies. The Fortune Ladies, of course, uh, were part of the 2020 Win a Car uh, voting process, and unfortunately, the Fortune Ladies made, didn't make it past uh, the top eight. But do not fret, we still hope for some more support for the Fortune Ladies. And honestly, the Fortune Ladies kind of do still need it, even though the last five cards they got were only just because they hadn't had support in two years. And it's crazy because the Fortune Ladies have such a good array of cards that, you know, there is still a lot that is missing from it, to be honest. But now, where exactly can I point those, you know, occursions out? Kind of can't really say. But I can honestly say that the Fortune Ladies do still rack up against a lot of decks in the form in terms of where they kind of stand. So, um, overall, I think the Fortune Ladies do need the boost. It's a lot that can easily go into this. There may be some things that can fit in for some cards that may not need to be. Yeah. But why don't we go on and just look at the Fortune Lady build that I have here. So, uh, starting off, we have three copies of Fortune Lady Light, three copies of Fortune Lady Pass, three copies of Fortune Lady Water, one copy of Fortune Lady Fire, one copy of Fortune Lady Wind, and one copy of Fortune Lady Dark. To round out the Fortune cards, we also have, I'm also playing two copies of Fortune Lady Hikari, then two copies of Witchcraft Golem Aruru, three copies of Effect Baylor, and three copies of Ash Blossom in Joyous Spring. So that rounds out the monsters, let's move on to the spells. Three copies of Fortune Lady Calling, three copies of Fortune Vision, three copies of Fortune's Future, three copies of Spell Book of Knowledge, one copy each of Rageki, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Golden Sarcophagus. To round out the main deck, three copies of uh, Fortune Lady Rewind. Then going on to the extra decks, two copies of the lovely Fortune Lady Every, one copy of Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, one copy of Barrel Load Savage Dragon, one copy of Scythe Frame Lord Omega, one copy of Black Rose Dragon, one copy of Mental Metal Marcher. And then for the Link Monsters, one copy of Unchained Abomination, one copy of Siri Yuja Skull Dread, one copy of Excess Code Talker, one copy of Selene, the Queen of Master Magician, one copy of Daybreaker, the Splendid Magical Knight, no, the Shiny Magical Knight, I'm sorry, Splendid Magical Knight is supposed to be. Uh, then we have one copy of Kristan Hoppy Five Bricks, one copy of Link Karibo, and one copy of Salaman Great Al Mirage. So, that pretty much just rounds out the deck itself. Now, let's go on into the Fortune Ladies. Um, this is pretty much just a kind of standard build, but because of how good Fortune Ladies are, with spamming the field, manipulation of level, um, I didn't really feel any, ex any link, not any, um, what is it? I just had a, any exceed monsters really. I think with the fact that we have Link and we have access to our own tuner and synchro setup, um, thanks to our tuner, I really just felt the Fortune Ladies didn't need, you know, any additional stuff to be extra. I think the basis is that with the spam of special summons, with the larger rate of, of level control, of level modulation, that honestly, I think this was just a, uh, this was a build that I honestly suggest to people, of, you know, just go full Link and Synchro and see, you know, the possibilities you can go with. Now, the one thing that I could commit is that Fortune Lady Pass is a great monster for the archetype. She has the ability to manipulate her level by banishing any number of spellcasters from your hand, field, and or graveyard. So, if you combine that with the effect of Fortune Lady Light, Fortune Lady Light will trigger, pass, changes her level, and you get a free Fortune Lady for um, removing her from the field. Especially considering Fortune Lady Water, who is another opt um, card into this, is your draw power. Like, a lot of things you'll be circulating will be either banishing Light to summon another Fortune Lady, and manipulating Fortune Lady Water for her draw power. Well, you have Fortune Lady Pass, who is going to be your tuner, and you're going to be synchroing a lot um, with this deck, because literally, because of having a tuner and her ability to manipulate level, you're going to have a lot of fun with Fortune Lady Pass. 
Um, also, considering the fact she's level one, she's dark. If you wanted to fit in one for one, I mean, go for it. That'd be a good addition to this. Especially considering the fact that the Fortune ladies kind of don't have much in terms of special summon, what as until Fortune's calling. But yeah, the the one for one factor can easily work with a couple of these monsters. Now, moving on from there, we've talked about the three of. Why don't we talk about these one of Fortune Lady? So Fortune Lady Fire destroys a monster on the field, um, but she has to be face up, and so does the monster. She has to be face up in attack position, and then the monster has to be face up as well. Although it's not one of your premier, you know, abilities. There are still ways to set some unfortunate lady fire through the effects of unfortunate lady. So, the one is probably only really needed, and because of, like I said, how everything is working in the deck, with the massive, massive special summons, you're not gonna be upset for just having one fortune lady fire. Fortune lady wind also makes her appearance. Wind is kind of the odd one out, because wind, um, ironically enough, only gets her ability when she's normal summon. And her ability, for the most part, is to destroy cells and chalk cards up to the number of fortune ladies you control. So, yeah. It's, unfortunately, very situational, and it's also a lot behind a normal summon. If that was ever the case, fortunately, when had a special, had it including special summon, then I think she would be perfectly fine. But, yeah, there's only going to be one win, because if the normal summon is anything, um, you see we have these additional cards to help set up for such summons, um, and it just kind of keeps that going on. Then we have Fortune Lady Dark. Fortune Lady Dark at one is only because there's no, you see there's no alluring. We're going to be focusing on just special summon, but we don't want to have things that we have to force and rely on a normal summon. And with Fortune Lady Dark being here, um, this is going to be a monster that has to destroy a monster by battle, send that monster to the grave, and then allow you to search the summon from the graveyard. So, if anything, don't hit a token. Literally, just don't hit a token. And that she is technically the highest fortune lady in the main deck um, that I'm using currently because I'm not running fortune lady Earth. Um, then, we have two copies of fortune, Fairy Hikari. She's here to help get Fortune Lady Light to the field, or send Light to the grave, to get another level 1, and then allow Fortune Lady Light to go off. You're primarily using her to go get Fortune Lady Pass, triggering Fortune Lady Light, and just having a lot of those one, level 1 combos. And then also putting a lot of level 1, putting a lot of monsters onto the board as well. You also get a Fact Veiler if you're feeling the chance to do that too. Then we have the golden, we have the witchcraft golem Aruru. What an amazing monster for spellcasters! The fact that it can special summon itself when a when a when your opponent activates a card or effect to target a spellcaster monster you control, either for effects or battle, you have the ability to summon this big monster to the board. It does leave the field during your opponent's next standby phase, but with the way your spellcasters are at points, wow, golden Aruru. Shirley knows how to make her presence, and she makes it well. Being a very high-level attack monster with such a unique and amazing special summon effect. And I could not pass up the points to run two of her. Uh, then we have, of course, the effect Baylor and Ash Blossom as hand traps. Um, you know, I've said enough about Ash Blossom and effect Baylor. I think Fe effect Baylor is going to be one of the bigger stars because of how much of this deck is spellcaster oriented. Now, moving on from there, we do have the spell cast. We have a lot of support for the Fortune Ladies, and I'm running multiples of them. Three copies of the for of Fortune's Future, so that way you can... I mean, Fortune's Vision, so that you can search for a lot of your Fortune Lady cards, and then protect your Fortune Ladies um, during your turn, or your opponent's turn. And depending on what you banish, which isn't too hard, um, if you banish your cards, your cards uh, won't be affected... Um... I believe it's battle damage will become zero. Oh no, when you're banishing your opponent's cards. But when you banish your cards, your cards, your monsters, you control cannot be thrown by card back. So, yeah, you do get that rest. And it's pretty much a, just a, um, five formation tanky when activated because you can add a fortune lady card from your deck to your hand. Unfortunately, the only fortune cards you can't add is fortune future because it's not a fortune lady card, sadly enough. But we do have fortune lady calling. This card is pretty much your speed up to special summoning other fortune lady monsters, as long as you control a fortune lady. You are locked into extra deck 
into the only extra deck summoning you're doing for the rest of the turn, being synchro moss, synchro summoning, but that's perfectly fine because, well, look at all the tuners we have and all the setup we can get from that. Then we have Fortune's Future, which allows, which is pretty much your draw power. Uh, sending the Fortune Lady that's banished back to the graveyard to draw you two cards. Then we have the Spell Book of Knowledge, another extension of draw power. Now, this deck has a large portion of draw set up for itself. Um, especially because it's Spellcaster, it has a lot of the Spellcaster set up. If you want to, you know, change it around with darks and add a lore, you can go for that too. Um, I did add a couple of one ofs in the forms of Regeki, Harpy's Feather Duster, and Golden Sarcophagus. Sarcophagus works well with Fortune Ladies because you can tag it with, you can combine it with Fortune's Future to send that Fortune Lady to the grave and then be able to draw cards off of it. You have Regeki and Duster to help you with front and back row. And then you have Fortune Lady Rewind, which is just a pretty much a hysteric party for the Fortune Ladies. Um, any number of banished Fortune Ladies with different names, she says I'm new to the field, and at the end phase they return to the deck if they're still on board. Now, just to note, this is one of the only cards that, ironically enough, will not trigger Fortune Lady um, Light's effect, and that's due to the rolling on this card, where because she isn't pronounced to be in the hand or engraved or just removed from how she's removed from the field affects this, and because this is a an effect that sends it back to the deck, it won't recognize that she was more and more special summon, ironically enough. I think that's how it's ruled. But it just doesn't work with Fortune Lady Light because of such. So, that's pretty much it, and it's honestly the only trap in the deck. Now, as far as the extra deck goes, um, we got Almirage, and we have Link Karibo. Almirage for the normal summon. If something gets screwed, Link Karibo for the level ones. Um, how quick five breaks to come in with the combos for the tuners? You got Fortune Lady Pass, you got Effect Veiler, you got Ash Blossom. You also have access to Daybreaker the Magical, the Shiny Magical Knight. This is only just for the whole spellcaster thing, and it also makes itself a breaker. For whenever uh, you set summon a spellcaster monster to learn this card points to against the counter, then you remove the two counters to destroy a card on the field. Um, then we have Celine, the Queen of Master Magician, and she's gonna work great with this because she can get any spellcaster um, that this deck has to offer, put it onto the board, and she helps you link on. You can go into Access Code Talker, you can go into Unchained Abomination, you can even go into Siri Yuja. I would prefer you not to go into Sherry Yuja through Celine. I'd actually would prefer you to get as many monsters onto the field as possible. So you can trigger off um, Sherry Yuja's fourth effect, which of course is to draw four cards and then place cards on the bottom of your deck. So that way, it's just more draw powers, correction to your hand. It will require multiple monsters, but you have enough support to help, especially with Fortune Lady Rewind. The access code talker is just here to be a beat stick, and there is access to it through combos with Celine, who can be reached through um, combos already with Hockey Fibrix. Um, then you have Unchained Abomination, who's here to help you destroy stuff. And the funny thing about how about Unchained Abomination, just destroy your Fortune Lady Light, and it's going to trigger. She's going to trigger. So, um, then uh, we have the Mental Metal Marshal, because this, of course, just Another extension of Halky Fibrex, so you can go into Barrel Sword Savage Dragon. You don't want to go into Barrel Load that way, you can always just do it the regular way and just synchro summon him uh, with a lot of your tuner and non tuner setup. Um, Double Fortune Lady Every, because she is the extra deck monster and the boss monster for the Fortune Ladies. Um, requiring one tuner and one non tuner spellcaster monster. Uh, just like the Fortune Ladies in the main, she gains attack equal to her level times 400. When she uh, increases her level, you can target one face up monster your opponent controls and banish it. And then during your opponent's in phase, if she's in the grave, you can banish another spellcaster and sense the sun herself. So she has set up for a lot of the Fortune Lady cards and support. She can sense the sun herself, and she banishes cards that get in her. Then the last two monsters, of course, are Trishula, Dragon of the Ice Barrier, because why not have Trish around? She has so many great options for it to really help you remove stuff off the board. And in Cyphere and Omega, just to, you know, mess with your opponent, banishing cards and putting cards back into your hand. So, that pretty much just leaves it there. So, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. 
and hit that notification bell so you guys can be informed of when I do upload more content. Social media links are in the description box below, and I will catch you all next time. HPJ, signing out.